Hello, good morning everybody and welcome once again to the Cranworth Model Railway and how are we doing for time and date? Well it's exactly 10 o'clock on the 10th of February 2023 and it's a Friday morning and as promised I'm going to look at brake, brake vans today and first of all um, I do realise that not everybody knows about a brake van and, and what a brake van is used for because I've had some younger viewers contact me and say you know is it necessary to have a brake van at the end of the train now back in the day you had um, vacuum braked um, wagons you had some wagons that had no brakes on at all other than the brake you pinned down on the side of the wagon now there's a, here we have a heavy gradient we've got three wagons on the heavy gradient and they've all had the vacuum um, brake applied so they're stationary and the vacuum brake being applied is represented by that piece of um, sponge black sponge so all the time the vacuum is there the brakes are hard on but now overnight or over a weekend very very slowly the vacuum leaks away and the brakes slowly release and I'm going to simulate that by this and this is what will happen got miles <laughs> miles away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a brake wagon. Now this is a, a Great Western. Let the dog see the rabbit. That's a Great Western Cardiff brake van. And you can see in the rear wheel there I've inserted a matchstick or a toothpick. And that's to simulate the brakes on the brake wagon being hard on. So there's the brake van. And now I've got to go and get the train. should have used a locomotive really but I used the hand of God there's our three our three wagons that represent that represent the goods train now he stopped and the brakes have been applied and the brake handle has been applied on the on the brake van and you can quite clearly if i zoom in can you see that big t-shaped handle with the beautiful shaped handle on it that is the actual brake that the guard would wind on and um, because the brakes are hard on and only on one axle I, sh I could have done both really that would have simulated it better but that's enough just that one axle being locked with the brake is enough to hold these three wagons in situ once the vacuum brake leaks off so that's why it's called a brake van because it's got a brake on it and that's all it does now from problem arises there if we start putting more and more and more wagons on this we've got more leverage or more weight to actually start the the thing moving it it will start skidding the wheels how did they get a get across that right well i'm going to show you if we zoom in on the side of this brake van Just there, it says 20 tonnes. Now hang on, Whoa, it's, it's an empty vehicle. How the bloody hell can that weigh 20, oh, 20 tonnes? It's got nothing on it. You know, there's smaller vehicles that are like 14 tonnes. Uh, petrol tankers, even when they're empty, they're, they're weigh more than this. They weigh, they, they weigh um, getting on for uh, over 14 tonnes. So why is this one so heavy when a petrol tanker full of petrol um, can weigh sort of less, can weigh, you know, in the region of 12 to 14 tonnes. Why is this one so heavy? And I'll tell you for why. And it all happens down below the sole bar. There's the sole bar. What is on the floor of this wagon? They used to use two, two materials. One was concrete. Huge reinforced concrete slabs would be laying on the floor underneath the wooden floor. And the whole length of the brake van would be concrete slabs. Um, I have heard that they did use cast iron as well, cast iron slabs that would be laid between the chassis and then the floor put on top of the uh, cast iron slabs and that would give it what we call traction so it would grip the, the rails better. So the brake van, why it weighs so much, 20 odd tonne and yet it's just a wooden vehicle is because of the internal weights. The internal weights give it traction and traction means on a gradient it won't run away it can grip the track and those weights were normally made of cast iron sometimes they were made of 
a reinforced concrete. I have seen on the Western with this type of vehicle as well, sometimes if you have a look underneath the, the, the sole bar, between the two axles you can see there, you'll see a tank. And there are recorded photographs of some of these toads that had a huge great tank that was full of water and that would aid the traction as well. So you, you added extra weight to give it traction. Now, what about a train in service going down a gradient? Well, I can't tell you what the whistle codes are because they were different for all regions and lots of them got lost in the midst of time. But a steam engine at the front of the train would have better whistle codes to communicate between the train crew and the guard and let's just say for argument's sake two pips on the whistle so if the loco did sort of <whistles> two poo two pips screw the brake half on to, to assist the loco assist in the going downhill if you're still gathering a bit of speed it might have been four pips on the whistle and that would be hard on, pin brakes down hard on. So the actual guard in the guard's van used to assist in the braking of a train. He would assist in the braking of a train going downhill. That was the main thing, so it didn't run away. So even in service, the, um, the train crew could um, ask the guard to help by winding on a little bit of brake or a lot of brake or maximum brake. And the other thing too, imagine the train going up a gradient and it gets stopped at a signal there'd be another whistle code for the driver to tell the guard pin the brakes right down hard full on full on because although she's stationary she doesn't want to start rolling back so the guard in the guards van had a very very responsible job and brake vans were very very important vehicles until we started getting the through brake pipe we started getting the vacuum brake and then later wagons had an air works brake you know, pure air not vacuum and as the braking systems got better and better and better the, the, that was the demise of the brake van and if you see these modern trains you know you'll see that there's no brake van they just don't require a brake van but that's back in the day so i hope that explains to you why we had the necessity for a brake van now i'm going to show you some of my models uh, i have got them all <laughs> um, there are thousands probably but i'm going to show you a little selection of what i've got and there's our bit of foam that was acting as the uh, vacuum brake that can go back in the drawer right let's see if we can get a good vantage point with this camera i haven't set this up yet so i'm i'm probably going to do that right now as we speak right and we don't want that silly silly uh, signal post in the way i'm going to bring a train into view and we'll see what we get no, we're a bit high, aren't we? We are a little bit high, so let's come down. Bear with us. I've got some ambient light I think we've got to get rid of as well. Ah, we go. Let the dog see. This is more like the David Bailey that we were expecting. Got a little bit of amb extra ambient light, but I can control that by putting the blind down. So hopefully you might get a fairly decent picture. Still quite bright, but um, let's we'll see if we turn it. Ah, ah, that's better. We've got some. I've got so much reflected light there, so I'm going to try to, if we can, get a vehicle in the viewfinder. Right there we are. This is. Um, I believe this is Mainline. Mainline made two Great Western toes. They also made some British Railways ones, but they made two of these Great Western ones, and when the first one's Ostrowski and Shoes Shoesbury, um, both twenty-ton vehicles, and both both really nice vehicles as well. Um, complete with the chimney for the for the guard to you know do his brew, brew his cup of tea, and they're very very nice vehicles. Long wheelbase. Um, weighing in excess of 20 ton with all the additional weights and rather a nice rather a nice vehicle so I've um, got quite a bit of a train here so I'm hoping it's going to propel nicely this is the second one that Mainline did go a little bit further and that's a Shrewsbury 
uh, just the same as the, the first one. It's got uh, smaller, smaller graphics on the um, 20 ton and, and the, the train, the train, uh, ve sorry, the vehicle number. Now I've got to tell you, these are nicknamed Toads. Now when people, including Hornby, do this, which is wrong, and Mainline did it, which is wrong, they refer to the word Toad when looking at vehicles from other regions like the London Midlands and Scottish or the North Eastern, they still call them Toads. That's incorrect. Toad should only really apply to the Great Western. And I'll tell you for why. The, the Great Western Railway were pathfinders. They were bloody good at everything they did. They really were a good company. Um, nicknamed God's Wonderful Railway, the GWR, God's Wonderful Railway, and apparently it was a really good company to work for. Back in the days before computer, and you got telephones, and then you had telegraph, telegraphic messages, where you could send typed messages down telephone cables, and one bloke would have a typewriter at one end, it would go down the wire, and it would be received at the other end, and then a teleprinter would, would print out the words. And uh, to make it a lot, lot easier as well, to keep instead of keep writing things like, 20 ton brake van or, or you know 14 ton petrol tanker it they simplified it and every vehicle on the western had a four digit code and it could be o w x t and when you read that and the operator would get to know exactly what these vehicles were and when they saw that code they knew instinctively that that was a seven plank coal wagon or something like that now the code for this brake van, for the long wheel based brake van on the Great Western Telegraphic System was T-O-A-D. So when you received at your station, can you please send to one Swansea three T-O-A-Ds? That was three of these brake vans were required down at Swansea. Right, as men, always have done throughout the passage of time we nickname things don't we and because these random four letters made a word and the word was toad from very very early on the great western just referred to these as toads and that's why it's a toad you might think it's nothing to do with wind of the willows or nothing like that it's actually the four letter code that used to be the telegraphic code for a brake van a long wheel but a long wheelbase brake van. So there you are, that, that's where you've got the word toad, and um, I have seen it applied sometimes incorrectly to London Northeastern region vehicles, but um, technically not right. It, it, what, it was applied only on the Western back in the day. Right, so there's two great Western ones, and now we've got, this is Worcester. As, if you wonder why I've got so many of these, I collect the different names of the different places. That's Worcester, and, um, that is a replica railways uh, model and that's uh, vehicle 59 and again 20 tons now british rail inherited these because there were thousands of them probably and when british rail was nationalized in 1948 they took these into ownership and there is just the same vehicle but in its days of british railways ownership and it's still labeled as being 20 ton it's got a black board with the big w means western region and it's vehicle number 55 and uh, 20.7 it says on one end and that might be the overall weight but there she is in a British Railways guys a slightly later grey now we move on to another one this again is the Great Western uh, livery and this one's lovely this one is Paddington beautiful Paddington and being a London boy I obviously had to have Paddington didn't I? I could not miss out Paddington that's a Backman by the way this is another Backman and this is Cardiff this is my cut off point I don't collect after this because I only collect vehicles that I've got in the Backman range the little mainline coupling there with the, you could see the copper spring and the little spring loaded hook once Backman went away from this type of coupling, I no longer collect them and they hold no interest for me. So Cardiff was probably one of the last ones made by Backman that had the old mainline coupling. Now I showed you them in British Railways ownership. Well, some were grey and some were bauxite. So let's have a look at an alternative. And here we here we coming into camera now. This is exactly the same vehicle, the big brake van, but this one now is in. Um, like an, a red oxide colour 
exactly the same vehicle but just a different colour and um, that is beautiful. Now we're going to move on to the London Midland and Scottish long wheelbase. They did do some short ones but we're looking at the long wheelbase um, wagons and as a collector I've got to tell you this I've never seen another one of these. I've never ever seen another, another one of those. What's amazing about this Everything on it is grey. The underframe, the springing, the brake blocks, the chassis, the, the walk boards, the kick boards, the buffers and the buffer steps and the little hook that comes out of the buffer beam. Everything on this is grey. Now nobody would have painted a brake van grey. It would have been absolutely filthy within the first week. What is it? Well, I've done a little bit of guestology, and um, I might be wrong. If I am wrong, you're going to have to shoot me down in flames, but I think I'm right. When the railway companies built a new loco, or they built a new tender, or they built a new coach or a wagon, it doesn't matter what, when it came out the works, it was painted in a water-based paint that could be washed off and it was painted in this very light grey and this grey, the actual colour is called photographic grey it's, it's a colour that photographs really well and brings out all the detail now they took photos of a newly built vehicle for their records, for their archive and with its number on the side and obviously they wanted their logo on it to identify it was theirs so I think this is a a brake van in photographic grey. Never seen another one. It comes in the correct Hornby box. It's got its own correct Hornby part number, but it's absolutely unique. I've never seen another one, and I've always got my eyes open on eBay. I've always got my eyes open. We got one coming up on the 18th when we go to a train fair at Norwich or, Nor or the Norfolk one. Um, or the Ipswich one. I've always got my eyes open for one of these and I've never ever ever seen another one So I think this was as she stood outside the assembly shops wherever crew probably When she'd just been manufactured and she would just had her photo taken when they'd had their photo taken uh, They washed off the photographic grey and I can tell you this as well. I read this in a book They only painted one side they only painted one the side that they were photographing and it was kind of a three forward facing three quarter view and just out of interest um, a, 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 a nice thing that Sir Nigel Gresley done he took some photographic pictures of A4s you know the big streamliners but with his daughter's names on the side I thought that was quite nice for a dad to do that to have some photos of a lovely engine with his daughter's names on the side right that's the photographic one we think this is her in British Rail Service and as you can now see she's got some um, black under frames and um, what's interesting with Hornby this is vehicle 732478 so it's 478 and uh, Hornby used to do this on a regular basis it was really good for collectors and people with fairly big layouts there's the same vehicle but it's a different vehicle this is the last three digits 119 this is 119 exactly the same but they give you an alternative number and sometimes they gave you three you can have maybe three alternative numbers and now you tell the difference on the box have the Hornby number and then at the end of the number there will be a capital A, B or C well A, B and C they were the ones with the different numbers um, I believe actually with this particular vehicle there is three numbers um, now you and those of you saw the um, the video that I did yesterday on departmental vehicles recognize this straight away but I've got to include it because it is a brake van and that is probably belongs to the S&T signal and telegraph department or the civil engineers but it's it been done in wasp stripes to make it look stand out it's high visibility you'd be very unlucky if you got run over by one of these if you couldn't see this coming and also not only the sides striped the buffer beams are bright yellow so that stands out as well and it's a really really nice vehicle now we move on to a really really well I suppose odd vehicle it, it's the London Brighton London and Brighton South Coast Railway that 
later become um, part of the Southern Region or the Southern Railway. And it's a beautiful breakdown, it, it, breakdown because it's got a veranda at each end. It's got a, you can just see the handle sticking up on that one. It's got the whirly jig handles, but you've got a brake handle at each end of the um, um, of the verandas. And unlike the Great Western, the Great Western ones, you could get them the wrong way round because it only had one veranda. But this one, it's irrelevant what way round it's facing because it's got a veranda at each end and i would imagine there was a lot of space inside that vehicle uh, you can imagine the old guard having a nice brew up on a cold october morning he's having a hot cup of tea and maybe a bit of bacon sandwich you know it, and it'd be a lovely environment but what i love about this one and i don't know if you can see it um i'll try to tip the, the loco down a little bit um there's i'll try to shield it there, there's a chimney on the top and it's got a little skirt on it so that when the water, when it's raining, when the water goes down the outside of the chimney, it gets diverted off the, off the skirt and drips onto the roof. It stops any water running down the outside of the chimney and, um, you know, making the whole thing damp. Uh, a good little uh, um, attention to detail there by Hornby to actually model that little chimney with the skirt on it. Right, now I don't know why, this is my all-time favourite brake van. Uh, the next one is my all-time favourite brake van. Here we go. It's a babby. It's a babby. It's a short wheelbase. But, interestingly, it still says on the side 20 tonnes. It's still a 20-ton brake van. And NE, obviously, that means the North Eastern, so that's the London North Eastern Railway. Um, Matt, this is Mainline. Mainline did do a version of this with the longer chassis, so it'd be this body on a longer chassis, and I've just ordered one, and it's the first one I've seen for a long time, so I've got one that was missing from my collection, that's on order, and I'm hoping that's going to come today. But there she is in uh, Boxite in the ownership of the London North Eastern Railway. And if we move on, this is what she became under British Rail. She became the sort of grey colour. And again, she is definitely a 20 tonne vehicle. Now the next one is the old London North Eastern Railway. So it's an old, very old vehicle, but look at the ownership that this thing must have changed, changed owners so many times. Now, um, when I worked on the railway for the first part of my career, I did about 12 years, 12 years, eight months on, on London Transport before transferring. And uh, the reason I've got this vehicle, it's actually got the underground logo on it. Just It's on the bottom of the ducket there. You can just see the logo with underground. And um, that's a lovely vehicle. It's got quite a lot of detail on it. It comes with vacuum pipes. It comes with these lovely little grab handles. It's fairly well detailed. And it's a lovely vehicle. And, and that's the one I've got coming will be the same as this, but in bauxite with Northeastern on it. It's the long extended um, brake van. Now you might ask why they extended it. And, and they were rebuilds. They were rebuilds of the earlier short wheelbase ones. The reason that they modified them and rebuilt them, because this one, these ones, the short ones, didn't have enough tractive effort. They didn't have enough brake weight holding it for a brake van. So this one, by extending, under these extended portions, you could add more concrete weights or more cast iron weights. The longer the chassis, and even the chassis itself, because it's longer, it's going to be heavier. And it was just to get more tractive effort on the wheels to stop them skidding when the brake was applied and she was holding back a heavy train. So they're actually rebuilds of the original London Northeastern region short wheel based wagons where they put them on new chassis. I'm not sure about the chassis, even the chassis might have been inherited from a, from a previous vehicle as well. So it's a bit of a hybrid really, if you like. Right, here we go, this is British Rail. Um, Baldsley Junction, not in common use. Uh, this is lovely. This is the, the Oxford Rail six wheel toad. And you can call this a toad because this was a, a, a toad, but I'm not sure whether it had the same, whether a six wheeled brake had the same code letters as a four wheeled brake. Knowing it, the Western and brake van is a brake van is a brake van, I would imagine off the top of my head they were toads as well. On the telegraphic system they were probably sent out as toads, but they're slightly shorter, 
They're a slightly shorter wheelbase, they're not as long, and it's a six-wheeler. Now, you've answered your own question here, haven't you? It's a, it's a lovely six-wheeler. Now, what does that indicate to us? That indicates to us you've got two more wheels on the, on the track. That means more tractive effort. These are a better adhesion. These brake vans, being six-wheelers, were far more far more tractive effort and cold could hold back a heavier train on a gradient than the old four-wheel brake vans so there's a six-wheel brake van that gives you extra traction it's not traction for pulling it's traction for stopping the bloody thing moving you want good traction between the wheel and the rail right there's the same very very same uh, brake van but this time it's got like blackboard um signs on the side and it, it's got white lettering and again this one's from Wolverhampton so this is a completely different area to Baldsley Junction and again this one's not in common use because the, these by the time these were in British Rail's hands they were very elderly old vehicle lovely glass windows the model is impeccable absolutely impeccable don't know how um, Oxford Rail made these for I think it was 10 quid they used to retail at when they were first released. It's probably different now. They're probably about 14 or 15 quid now. So we've got a six-wheeler. We've got another six-wheeler. Oh, and I've got, to, I've got to show you this. It's not fair to, to not let her have a little bit of the limelight. What is moving this train? It's bloody heavy. It's a heavy train. And it propelled as well, which actually surprised me that we could do all the photography and, and not have a derailment. But anyway, let's let's give credit where it's due. Keeping the theme of the Western. There she is. Look at her. That's Thruster. That's Thruster. And as I said in previous videos, she might be a bit of an ugly duckling, but I'll tell you what. You've got to go a long, long way to find an engine that can perform better than this. And I'm going to illustrate that now. Because I am going to feed in the berries. Nothing's happening as yet. I can hear a light pitched buzz. Par excellence wonderful absolutely wonderful look at what you've got not what you haven't look at what you've got look at that right okay we've got six wheeler in british row ownership another six wheeler in british row ownership that's the second one a long wheelbase, ex London, Midland, and Scottish. No, no, ex Northeastern. Sorry, ex Northeastern. This is ex Northeastern as well, but in a short wheelbase. Then in the Northeastern ownership box site with a short wheelbase. London, Brighton, and South Coast Railway. That one. Ex London, Midland, and Scottish, but in wasp stripes. British Rail ownership. Again, British Rail ownership with a different running number. Ah, have a little look at this one. We'll stop here. I think this is photographic grey. I can't think of any other reason why you'd have an all-grey brake van. British Rail towed in the bauxite colours. Great Western, Cardiff. Great Western, Paddington. Then we have a mainline British Rail version that's made by mainline, that British Rail one. Then we have Worcester, which I believe is the only one ever made by Replica Railways. And a little bit confusing if you find one at the Toy Fair because it, on the base it will say Backman. Trust me, it's not Backman. Backman are used to supply the parts, and so all the Replica Railway models do have a, a Backman normally a Batman base plate but don't let that confuse you too much and then the last two are the two alternative names issued by uh, Mainline and the first one's easy for me to pronounce that's Shrewsbury Oswestry I can never pronounce this properly I know how it's meant to sound but Oswestry Oswestry anyway I think that's over in um, West London somewhere I think they had cinema studios over there but anyway that's my uh, little collection of brake vans again it'll just show you what is available on the market 
and we just do one more one more fly past we do it propelling first of all here we are there they go in their glory all toads that's a toad another toad another toad bauxite photographic grey alternative numbers in BR livery for the London Midlands London Midland in an S and T colours. London Brighton and South Coast Railway. North Eastern short wheelbase. British Rail North Eastern short wheelbase. North Eastern X North Eastern long wheelbase. And then we've got the two delightful Oxford Rail um, vehicles. And because I'm in a sort of mucking about mood, turn that off. Let's just see what she can do with the minimal amount of berries. She's moving. Look at that. I don't know if it was from a book or a film or a philosopher, but I know someone once said, it might have been Julius, no, it couldn't have been Julius Caesar, could it? I don't think, no, I think not. But somebody in history or somebody important at one stage said, and they were quoted as saying, a picture paints a thousand words. And I think this here doing this in front of us, I could spend time giving you a thousand adjectives, but you could never explain it better than by looking at that now. that's probably insignificant on its own but it's not when you consider what she's drawing on the draw bar and let's just have a look at that we've got one this will give you the last opportunity to look at the brake vans as well you've got one you've got two you've got three coming up that's three and we've got four Northeastern Boxite is five. London Brighton and South Coast is six. Wasp Stripes is seven. London Midland Region British Railways eight. With a different number is nine. In photographic grey, I make that number ten. Boxite, Toad, 11. 12 is the Cardiff Allocated Van. 12 is Paddington. I hope I haven't lost count. 13 is just the plain, unadorned British Railways version of the Toad. I think we're up to 13, 14, 15, probably about 15 wagons. I might be wrong. I might be wrong. And there's one thing I do just say goodbye to this lot now and give us some proper berries. There she goes. Now there's one thing I love about model railways. Well, I love model railways, full stop, period. Um, but there's one thing I love, and y y you never stop learning. You never ever stop learning. Now, I did a thing the other day, didn't, didn't think anything of it. I did a, a video on seven and nine plank wagons and a guy kind of wrote back to me and said did I know and I didn't that there were two versions of the S and J Moreland and Sons the, the people like England's glory matches there was two versions of it and I was totally unaware of this and he said it's actually mentioned in Ramsey's guides well I've got two Ramsey's guides I think I've got the third edition and the eighth edition but anyway with my two it, it's not in there it's not it's in there but it's not listed that they did a variation of it and uh, all i can think of he's got a better version he's got a later edition than what i've got that has got more detail in it but uh, anyway i've got to show you this because this is you know i didn't know this and i never had one i never had one i have now <laughs> right this is the little fella in question that's Good bit of David Bailey. There we are, S and J, um, Moreland, and there's her mate. There, 
and there's no difference they're absolutely identical you might think oh what what's the what's the difference and and it's there can you see that this has got a light sandy straw colored interior that's got a very dark brown and and they are completely right, get the light to catch them in the right way I will get there trust me there you go you, you might be able to see now we've got two distinctly different browns there is um, a dark brown and a very very light brown which indicates to me one thing that indicates to me one thing they did at least two production runs on this particular vehicle and I'm not surprised because it's such a pretty vehicle it's such a pretty little vehicle but there anyway, are for those people who are out there and they, they're avid collectors like me this is what you've got to watch out for you've got to watch out for um, sand on the right sandy color on the right with the light catching it dark brown on on the left so there's two versions same box same number no differences to the vehicle at all same coupling same screw mountings everything's identical but one's light and one's dark so if you're an avid collector and you're into your mainline variations uh, there's one <laughs> there's one for you and i know at least two people now tonight will be having sleepless nights because they're avid mainline vehicle collectors. Anyway, that's it for today. I've showed you the brake vans that I've got. There's many, many, many more loads. Um, there's even all the celebration ones they do, like, you know, Hallby 2007 and Hallby 2008. And every year they bring out another one with the date on the side. Um, if you're into those, there's loads of those to collect, obviously. But... Um, there you are, that's the, that's the my collection of brake vans, just to give you some idea and what's available out there and, and maybe what you've already got or maybe you might have seen something that you haven't got and you didn't know existed. And like I always say, if you only get half the fun from your toy trains as I do from mine, all of us together, uh, help make the world a much, much nicer place. And there you are, that's something to think about, isn't it? That there's a variation there's a variation on the S&J Moreland seven plank coal wagon, a light straw interior or a dark brown interior. It's all those little things like that that make model railway collecting such a lovely hobby. It really is. And it's nice that people communicate and write and tell me and say, you know, did you know? No, I didn't. And I thank the guy that pointed that out to me. I thank you for that because I was totally unaware, totally unaware that there were actually two different shades of brown on the interior well thanks for watching it's friday today so start of the weekend everybody have a gr great weekend keep yourself safe we were minus two here last night so um it was quite cold in norfolk so keep yourself wrapped up keep yourself warm and keep yourself safe and i'll catch you all later on any queries on the brake van collection drop us a line anything you want to see on videos drop us a line i'll do my best to recreate it thanks very much indeed catch you all later and bye for now.